My enslaved mother and I were the many victims of slavery, but I never gave up and was able to turn my life around thanks to a foundation. It started when a man came knocking at my mother's door. He told her parents that he'll put her to work, all for a small price without my grandmother getting a say. My grandfather sold her. My mother was no longer a burden and was enslaved at a young age to provide for her family. She was sold for a couple dollars trafficked and has been a slave all her life. I was born into her world and it was only until years later that I was saved from hell. My job was to work on Lake Ulta, the largest man-made lake scuba diving every day in the dirtiest of waters, working on ships and serving under an overseer whenever I failed at any of these tasks. I was beaten and denied food. I watched my mother receive senseless beatings after slaving away every single day working for scraps. I slept every night, paralyzed in fear, without shelter. I laid on dry grass, paranoid, wondering if I was going to be eaten by the lurking wild animals. Watching the punishments and sacrifices my mother made pushed me to keep working hard because it meant we were providing. What I didn't know at the time was that I had been conditioned to think that the child labor I did was normal, necessary even, and the cruel treatments I got was all there was to life. It was only until I saw other kids much younger than I being treated terribly, that I learned there was no escape from this life. There were senseless beatings, many of my friends were malnourished, and worst of all. Many of them never got to grow old with me. I watched them pass over with my very own eyes as I watched the other kids around me draw their last breaths. I constantly wondered when it would be my turn. How many more beatings would I have to take? Every day was a constant battle of trying not to sink and drown in muddy water. When I was 10 years old, the entire course of my life changed my mother in search for a better future for her, and I gave me away. I was taken in by the Rescue Foundation many hopes I was taken to their recovery center, and for the first time in my entire life I was given food, water, and adequate sleep without having to worry if it'd be taken away from me. I had clothes to put on my back and I couldn't understand the generosity of the people doing this for me. I never asked for anything and they continuously kept providing me with everything I'd ever need to actually live. They took me back to my actual hometown and I was finally allowed to live with my grandmother. I was granted the opportunity to a completely free education paid by many hopes. I was happy to learn, but I had so much catching up to do I didn't even know how to hold a pencil. I was a slave for all my life, and this was my first time learning anything that wasn't ships. I regularly thought about the other kids at the lake and how many of them wouldn't have a home to go to, even a free. I thought about other people like my mother who lost their childhood and worked all their life. Many hopes granted me a way out, but my only job now was to work harder than everyone else in my class. I needed to do it for my mother who slaved her life away, helping me get set up, and for my grandmother who took me in. All of my continuous hard work paid off and I was awarded the highest honors of admission to university all semesters and supplies paid for by many hopes. It didn't mean my struggle stopped there. Working in school through all the traumas Lake Ulta gave me was one of the biggest challenges I faced. I had many sleepless nights and this affected me in school at times. Physically I was free, but my mind wanted to take me back to the lake. I tried to forget everything about the endless murky lake, all the kids that were beaten and starved. But I had to keep moving forward. I had to break the cycle in Ghana of desperation and show that no human has a price. After graduating from university with a business degree, I was granted an incredible job working for marketing campaigns. I flew on private planes for companies like Shell Oil and Tiffany's. I did everything everyone around me thought I would never do. I worked from literal rags to riches. However, there was a gap inside me that I still couldn't fill. Though I achieved freedom, the fact is there are still kids hauling ships, moving nets, being beaten every breathing moment. I couldn't leisurely work at my job knowing I still have brothers and sisters left behind that needed a chance to be saved. I made the bold decision to quit my career and went back to Ghana and worked at the Many Hopes and Challenging Heights Rescue Center, the same exact one that saved me. When I returned to my home village of Winneba, I was greeted by the children, hugged and paraded by all of them. I knew I had the knowledge and expertise to show the kids in Ghana that they too can be like me. Right now I'm running investigations to locate kids that are trafficked, finding out where their home is. And freeing them out of slavery. The trauma, scars, mental illnesses and stolen childhoods is almost unbearable to witness. I don't wish it upon anyone. Our Many Hopes facility receives donations till this day and every cent goes a long way to ending modern slavery. It's remarkable to think there are good people in the world that care about our cause and care about saving these kids. It's so easy to live in comfort and turn a blind eye to the rest of the world like I almost did while I was in school. But I've seen change being made from those that pay attention. I myself am a prime example of the change made by people who care.